Earth turns on an imaginary line called its axis. The north and south poles are at the ends of this axis. The motion is called rotation. It takes just about 24 hours for Earth to make one rotation. Earth travels in a slightly elliptical orbit around the sun, with one revolution taking 365 and a quarter days. The average distance between the Sun and Earth is 149.6 million kilometers. But because Earth's orbit is not quite round, Earth is predictably farther from and closer to the Sun during its annual circumnavigation. Perihelion, which is the closest point, occurs about January 3rd and the distance is 147 million kilometers. Aphelion, the furthest point, is around July 4th. The distance is 152 million kilometers. Because Earth is closest to the Sun around January 3rd, common sense might suggest that is when Earth would be warmest. People in the Southern Hemisphere would nod in agreement, because January is summer down there. In the Northern Hemisphere, however, we know this is not the case. Earth as a whole does receive more energy from the sun in January at any other time of the year, but that is not the reason for the seasons. Proximity to the sun is not the variable that determines summer and winter. It's the tilt of Earth's axis. Earth's axis is tipped by 23 and a half degrees from vertical with respect to the plane of its orbit around the sun. As Earth revolves around the sun in its elliptical orbit, it also rotates on its tipped axis, one rotation every 24 hours. By coincidence, the North Pole aims towards a star called Polaris, or the North Star. At this time in history, no matter where Earth is in its orbit, the North Pole always points towards the North Star. During perihelion, the North Pole is leaning away from the Sun. This is the time of darkness for Earthlings living north of the Arctic Circle. Days are shortest and nights are longest for the Northern Hemisphere. The season is winter. Half a revolution later, the North Pole, still pointing at the North Star, is leaning towards the Sun. The days in the Northern Hemisphere are longer. At the same time, the South Pole angles away from the Sun and the Southern Hemisphere experiences shorter days and longer nights. Think about the last time you spent a whole day outside, in the yard, playing, riding your bike, or going to your favorite park. You start walking and playing as the sun rises over the horizon. You see the rays of sun angle their way over the hills or through the trees and feel slight warmth on your face. The sun moves steadily higher in the sky until at noon it's beating nearly straight down on your sweaty face and is boiling hot. Time to rest in the shade. Over six hours or so, you experience the effect of changing light intensity on the ground as the angle of the sun's rays changed. Early in the morning, Earth was illuminated by light that hit the surface at a very small angle, perhaps only 10 degrees. The consequence was that the beam was spread over a large area. The concentration of radiation was reduced because it was distributed across a large area. The lower the solar angle is, the less intense the light is on Earth's surface because energy in the light beam is spread over a larger area. You could observe this effect when you shine a flashlight on the floor across the room, as compared to a shining it straight down between your feet. The beam has exactly the same amount of light in both instances, but the beam at spot 2 spreads out over a larger area. The intensity of light per unit is less than spot 2 than it is in spot 1, which is illuminated from directly above. 90 degrees. Solar angle affects the intensity of light on an area, which in turn affects the amount of energy, which in turn affects the amount of heat transferred to an area of Earth during the day, and affects seasonal heating. Near the equator, the sun always transits high in the sky. Solar angle is close to 90 degrees, and light intensity on the ground is high. The farther north or south you go from the equator, the more significant the change in solar angle becomes during part of the year. The reduced energy concentration caused by decreasing solar angle is the major factor responsible for winter weather. Earth's atmosphere also affects how much radiation reaches Earth's surface. Light rays striking Earth's surface at a small angle, between 20 degrees or 30 degrees, 
pass through more of Earth's atmosphere than rays striking the surface at larger angles, 80 or 90 degrees. As small angle rays travel through the atmosphere, it absorbs more energy, leaving less energy to reach the surface. Large angle rays pass through less atmosphere, so more energy reaches Earth's surface. We take night and day for granted. The sun comes up, the sun goes down. Because Earth is tilted on its axis. However, the lengths of days and nights change as the year progresses. Remember when it's summer in the northern hemisphere, the north pole angles towards the sun, resulting in more hours of daylight. In fact, the sun does not set at the north pole. At any location north of latitude 62 and a half degrees north, which is the Arctic Circle, daylight lasts 24 hours on the summer solstice. At the north pole, a day lasts six months, followed by six months of night, 